Are you tired of hitting behind the ball when it comes to your irons and constantly chunking them? And everybody's telling you, you got to hit the ball first before you hit the ground? Well, you know that, but the question is, is how do you do that? Well, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to share with you three simple concepts, three super easy ways to start to hit the golf ball and then the ground. I'm PGA teaching professional Todd Kolb, and in order to hit good quality iron shots, we all know you got to hit the ball and then you got to hit the ground. You got to have the divot in front of the golf ball. So let's talk about this right away. Let's dive right into it. I'm going to give you three simple things here that you can do today to help you achieve that. Now, the first one that I want to talk about is the easiest one, <laughs> and that is ball position. All right, so let me just hit a stock shot. I've got my Reimer training aid out here. I like to use this for a variety of different things, but especially when I'm working on ball position and aim, stuff like that, it's really helpful. It's got this little slider on there up top here. So I've got it set on zero. I'm gonna, that's my natural ball position spot. So if I have a student come in, all right, I've got the pointer right out there, and I've got this on zero. I'm gonna have them hit a golf shot. Okay, like that one there, I hit a little bit thin, all right? Didn't quite compress it the way that I wanted to. So if I have a student, who's hitting that type of shot, the simple and the easiest thing to do is to just move the ball back a little bit, okay? Because when we're swinging this golf club, if you've watched any of our videos be before, you've, you've heard some of these things, but the golf club starts on the ground, and when you take it away, it starts to move back up and in on a circle initially, and if you're making a good golf swing, it starts coming back down for all practical purposes, kind of on that circle, and then it hits its low point, and then it starts traveling back up. So if I just simply take the ball and I move it back a little bit, that allows me to hit the ball as the club is still in a descending motion. So get set up, instead of having it on zero, I'm just gonna slide it back here to minus one, move the ball back there to match that spot. I've kept my feet in the same spot. I've just moved that ball back a little bit. Now I'm gonna make the same golf swing. Okay, and you could hear that. I definitely had more compression and I caught the ball, the club caught the ball as it was traveling in a little bit more of a downward motion. So that's gonna allow me to hit the ball and then the ground. All right, so that's the first way that we could do that. Well, what about a second way? What's another way that we could do this that would make it, you know, pretty simple and pretty easy? Well, it has to do with the position of your hands. Now. If you haven't already, hey, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We love hearing from you here at US Golf TV. We are growing like crazy. So tell a friend, we've got great content coming out and I love hearing from you. Be sure to leave a comment because you're teaching me some stuff as well. But what about this hand position, Todd? You're thinking, all right, well, here's what you can do. Once again, I'm gonna put the ball back into the zero position, okay? But what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna keep my feet in the same spot what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the handle a little bit forward. So now the butt end here moves forward. And so as I look down, I feel like the butt end is almost over the three. Now by doing that, okay, let me go ahead and hit a shot. So this would be neutral, all right? Move it a little forward towards three. Boom, that felt really good. Now by doing that, basically taking the handle and leaning it a little bit forward, what that does is it helps you create a little bit more of a descending blow on the golf ball. Actually, lots of people improves their contact and gives them a little bit more distance because it actually de-lofts the club a little bit and most people are adding loft in the golf swing. So that's a good way if you're hitting the golf ball too high, okay, is to just lean the shaft a little bit forward. So those are two simple things that you can do. I just move the ball back a little bit Move my hands for they don't require changing your swing or doing a bunch of stuff like that. So what about the third way? What's the other simple way that we could hit the ball, then hit the ground, just like your friends are telling you to do, but they don't tell you how to do it. They tell you what to do, but not how to do it. All right, how can you do that? Well, let me show you. The next way you could do it is by where the weight is at on your feet. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I am a huge fan of the 60-40 split. What I mean by that is I've got 60% of my weight or pressure on my lead foot. I've got 40 on my trail foot to start my golf swing. Now, why is that? Okay, the reason for that is because you want to start to unweight early. That helps rhythm and tempo and cadence and all those types of things. So I start a little left side heavy, 
lead side heavy, I push that towards my trail side and I start to turn. That gives me a little bit, this little bit of movement, okay, this little bit of movement really helps me get some rhythm and some pace. Now, the other thing that you need to understand is that the bottom of the swing, which is kind of what we're talking about, we want to hit the ball and then the ground, largely, not all, but largely has to do with where that pressure is at on your feet. Let's talk about that, all right? Where your pressure is at on your feet. So what I mean by that is all things being equal, if I make a golf swing, all right, and when the club gets to the bottom, if all of my weight's on my back foot, the bottom of the swing is going to tend to be backwards, okay? If I make a golf swing and at the moment of impact, all of my weight's on my lead foot, the bottom of the swing moves forward. Okay, so here's two ways. I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you how to do it in the swing from a feel standpoint, and then I'm going to give you a drill to do it. All right, here we go. So what we're saying is we want to get our weight, our pressure more on our lead foot when we come in contact with the ball. That will help. So the feel would be to basically, as you turn and rotate, just feel like you keep a little bit more pressure or weight on your lead foot. Okay, so here we go, I'm gonna set it. I wanna keep it a little bit more weight on my lead foot. Okay, and that definitely has some good contact there on the ground. Now, or excuse me, has some good contact between the ball, the club, and the ground. Now, there's an entire system of coaching built around that kind of basic concept. And it's, people agree or disagree with it, the truth of the matter is, is those instructors who've taught that have had a lot of success. There's the other sides of the table, and. You know, we got to take both perspectives there, but that would be the feel. Keep more weight, or feel like the pressure is on your lead foot. Now, what about a drill that you could do? Okay, what about a drill that you could do on the golf course? Well, here's one of my favorites. Kind of building upon the same concept. What you're going to do, I like to do all my drills like a six iron or a seven iron. You get started. I'm going to take regular back swing, and then as I come forward, I'm going to go ahead and swing and step forward. Okay, so back swing, forward swing, step forward. Let me go ahead and do it with the ball. So start out slow, maybe put the ball on a tee. Don't have to, don't have to get in a hurry. The idea of a drill is to get the feel. Not to hit your seven iron 200 yards, to get the feel. All right, here we go. Ready? Back. Boom, a little forward. God, that felt really good. Really good. Let me do it again. Here we go, set up. Yep, now, when you do that, you can see it. What's happening? Boom, weight's going forward, right? Weight goes forward, bottom of the swing goes forward, contact improves, all right? Now, if that is a little bit challenging for you, because that requires a little bit of balance, here's a variation that you can do of that same drill. All right, here we go. Regular setup, got the ball in my spot, got my rhyme right there. I got it in my neutral position because I'm doing the drill. Set up, take your lead foot, Bring it back to your trail foot, put the club on the ground, now I'm going to swing up and then I'm going to step. Swing up, step. Now you could tell I hit a little bit behind that, didn't I? Okay, let me do it again. This one I find a little bit easier from a balance standpoint. Okay, so set up, ball back, excuse me, lead foot back, swing it up. That was better, and step forward. So when we talk about hitting quality iron shots, what we're talking about is hitting the ball and then the ground. Your friends probably told you that. What they didn't tell you is how the heck do you do it? Move the ball back. Get your hands a little forward. Get your pressure moving forward. If you do any one of those three, you're going to definitely start hitting the ball and then the ground. And what you're going to see is cleaner contact, better shots, and irons that finish closer to the pin.